Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Mehul and in this video we want to see about dev dependencies. So in the last video we saw how the dependency key works in package.json but what happens is a lot of times you use a lot of tooling, you use a lot of npm packages to you know um, speed up your development process or you know bundle files like babel, webpack, stuff like that. These files are not really required to run your application, right? For example, if you are using Lodash as a library in your main code, Lodash is actually required to run your application, right? Because your JavaScript would crash without Lodash package because it cannot find the underscore or Lodash variable. But tools like Webpack, tools like Babel, you know, any sort of library which you use just in development is not really required in production, right? So you can safely not install it in a production environment because you will never be able you would never be making use of that anyway so how do you differentiate that how do you segregate that well you use something known as dev dependencies for that and what you do is you say npm install webpack but you know if you do this it's going to place that into the dependencies so you write a flag here and you say save dash dev so what it's going to do is that it's going to add webpack to your project no worries about that but what it's going to do instead of adding it inside the dependencies uh, object inside package.json it's going to add it into a section called dev dependencies so you see this is the dependencies object and this is the dev dependencies object again same thing nothing changed you have the version number you have the caret symbol in front which follows the uh, minor patch update which we talked about earlier um, but yeah the idea now is that you are inside the step dependencies thing so what happens now well what happens now is that you suddenly have control over npm install let me just go ahead and remove um, the whole node modules folder now and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see package.json you see we have dependencies and we have dev dependencies with us I'm gonna do one thing. I'm gonna say uh, echo node env here. You see that it's blank. This environment variable is blank. So what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say node env is production. So that means I'm tricking npm into believing that my computer is actually a server, right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an npm install. Hit enter. What's going to happen now is that if I go ahead into node modules folder you see that we do not have any webpack folder right so webpack is not installed why is that well you see I'm in the production mode and when you're in the production mode only these dependencies are installed or just like I said dependencies would always be installed no matter where you are running right so when you're in production when this node env is set to production which is always you should always set that in pro on as production on your production servers when you run npm install it's not going to install any dependency at all inside dev dependencies why because these are dev dependencies these are required just for developing the product not for using the product not for instantiating the scripts on the main server so this is the difference between dev dependencies and dependencies all the dev stuff, all the stuff which you not do not really need on production goes inside dev dependencies. Um, they mostly include build tools and uh, you know just just the uh, what do you say it uh, the uh, package uh, the the combiners and minifiers all that stuff. And uh, most of the things uh, are going into dependencies which are used by your application. So yeah, that's, that's basically it for this video. I'm going to see you pretty soon in the next one.